guys, and welcome back for another episode of the Social Hour Podcast, a podcast for sewists by sewists. I'm your host, Ashley. And I'm your host, Bethany. And on today's episode, we have the lovely Liza Taylor with us. Hi, Liza. Hi, Hi. thanks for having me. Uh, We're so excited to have you here. And for those who don't know who Liza is, she's Liza Taylor Handmade. She um, is amazing with the foundation paper piecing. So if you're following me at all, you know that I've been obsessed with this lately. So we're going to dive in to that topic today, which is if we call it FPP, that's the abbreviation for foundation paper piecing, because I know we have some listeners that may not know what that means. But we're going to kind of dive into that. But before we do, I would love it if you could just share a little bit about who you are and how you got started in sewing. People love to hear um, our guest background. Sure. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having me. So my name is Liza and I'm in Utah. Um, So I have two little girls who you might hear some screams in the background, but (laughs) they're um, loud and very active, but they keep me on my toes. So um, how I started sewing, it was like seven years ago. Um, I'd seen all these beautiful, there's actually a big account that sells vintage quilts. That's all she does Mm. is sells these beautiful vintage quilts. And I had no sewing experience. I had no quilting experience, but these quilts are just incredible. Um, So I kept seeing them and I kept trying to get on and buy them and they would sell so fast. So there was like, no way, like I just missed out every single time. So there was one I was like super excited for and um, got on right when it went live and it sold. So I was like, oh, that's such a bummer. I was like, maybe I could figure out how to sew it myself. And it's just um, squares and mm-hmm. kind of like a around the world, trippy, trippy mm-hmm. around the world quilt. So I was like, maybe I could figure that out. So I went to my local fabric store and bought some fabrics and watch some YouTube tutorials, <laughs> of course. self-taught on YouTube university. So um, did all that and put together the quilt. And it actually, I was like going for like a throw size, right? But I had no idea like sizing and seam allowances mm-hmm. would take it down. So it ended up being king size. <laughs> so, oh my God. Yeah. So, and that's just um, the quilt top. You still had yeah. to like quilt it all. Yes, absolutely. So I actually sent it to a long armor because I was like, I don't, my machine can't do this. Like, you know, No. but anyway, so I caught the bug then and just it escalated from there. (laughs) When my husband and I were trying to get pregnant, we had um, a hard time and we had a big miscarriage. And so Mm -hmm. I'm sure many of your viewers can relate that. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, an incredibly tough time. So I was like, I'm going to dive head first into the hardest quilting p- pattern I can find. And just doing that, like getting my mind off of it and like mm-hmm. just yeah. that therapy of like being in my mm-hmm. sewing room and dealing with that processing and coping, like that really helped heal me. So mm-hmm. yeah. And then I was like, quilting helps the soul. It is. It you does. Know, yeah. It's just I've always healing. said that sewing is like my therapy. Yes. Like yeah. it can be very therapeutic. Something about just being able to take fabric and turn it into something or just the sound of the machine or just the feeling of accomplishment yes it's just it's very gratifying yes it very is so I'm glad that you found it in that time and do you do you um looking back at that that first time you've like really kind of dove into it and to where you are now like when you take a minute to step back and look at that and all you've yeah. accomplished, because I know what you've accomplished, but our listeners <laughs> don't yet. But um, it's how do you feel about that journey that you've taken and the leap of faith that you took to just dive right in? Yeah, it's crazy. It's like if you had told me when I started, I would not believe you. <laughs> like So that's why I'm yeah. such so passionate about people just, you know, giving it a go start. because you yeah. don't. You don't need to take sewing expensive sewing classes if you don't want to. You don't have to buy an expensive machine. Just start mm-hmm. and, you know, you'll get to where you want to be. But it's it's so worth it. <laughs> now, do you still sew on the same machine that when you started or have you upgraded or have you gotten some new ones? So I did. I actually like back in 2020 upgraded. So I guess, yeah, for a few years, I used that same machine. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I actually had it on my ironing board and I would stand and sew. Really? Yeah. I just need one other person do that. And I, um, on their ironing board. And I always thought yeah. that was really interesting because 
my ironing board is not stable enough for that. No, <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> that was a wild ride, but I have stood to sew. Um, and I don't, I don't hate standing to sew. Sometimes I need to stand up and take a break, but I want to keep going. Yeah. But I've never thought to put my sewing machine on my ironing board. But that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't have like any space. We were in like a yeah. tiny apartment. I didn't want to invest in like anything if I didn't really like it, you know? You got to work with what you got. There's yeah. no shame in that at all. But yeah. that's so funny. I love that you started sewing by standing. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> to make a whole king size yeah. standing and sewing, just... I mean, it, she had this extended Ooh. table, essentially, to support the yeah. fabric. It's not, like, a horrible idea. Yeah. I mean, and then she could just press it right there as she's going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. So so what what do you sew on now? What machine do you use now? So I've always used a Bernina because my first machine was actually my mom's machine. I was just borrowing mm -hmm. it. Um, and then like after four years, she was like, can I have that back, please? So, <laughs> um, so now I'm on a Bernina um, 770 and I got it back at like the very beginning. It was like close to the beginning of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, the, the shops were like wanting to make deals and um, mm -hmm. it was a floor model. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's an expensive machine, but I got it for a really good price and it has just served me so well. And it's going to be my good. machine forever. Like it's, yeah. it's so good. I love mm. Bernina's. They are good machines. They are. And um, I think it's good for people to realize like you can, I think it's two call outs here. One you don't have to buy a machine to get started. You borrow yeah. the machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've loaned out one of my machines that I don't use anymore um, that works perfectly fine still. I just have it as a backup um, yeah. to of someone who wanted to learn to sew. Or I have had an extra serger I let someone borrow to be able to learn to how to use a serger to see if they really wanted to mm -hmm. invest in one and add that yeah. to their collection. So, you know, you can ask a friend, ask a family mm -hmm. member who maybe doesn't sew as much or has an extra machine, like, can I borrow it? Or can you like, can I come over and practice and see if it's something I really want to do before you invest in machines? So I love that your mom was so kind to, to let you do the, borrow one for so long. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then the, the second fold of that is like, you may have like a dream machine that you want, but you can shop around. You can usually find mm -hmm. good deals. You can um, wait till like holidays when they some mm -hmm. of the shops will run sales. You can talk to them and say, hey, when is the next model coming out? When that model, the next model comes out, will you be lowering the price of this one? You know, like, mm -hmm. can, can I be on that email list to let me know? Mm -hmm. Like those kind of things. I think there's, you don't have to like, I know for me, I'm kind of an impulse buyer. But mm -hmm. when it comes to things like that, sometimes it's being worth being patient to be able to get that upgrade in the budget that you have. So I love that you were like, Hey, I'm just going to keep my eye on what I want. And yeah. when it, the price is right, you got to jump on it. So yeah. And floor awesome. models, like every shop yes. has floor models and they're usually they willing to sell if you ask about it. Yeah. And they're very well taken care of. So yeah. <laughs> being yeah. there. So, um, yeah. so let's dive into like, so you started with quilting mm -hmm. now, then you kind of, took a dive into foundation paper piecing, which I feel like is a part of quilting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like adjacent, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, because it's a, it's, I like it. And I'll tell you why I like foundation paper piecing over okay. quilting because I don't have the patience to cut out perfect pieces for a quilt, but with yeah. foundation paper piecing, I don't have to cut out perfect pieces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And for me, it's like paint by numbers, mm -hmm. but, yeah. but, fabric, right? So maybe I'll let you define what foundation paper piecing is and then kind of tell everybody what, how you got into that and what you do with it. Yeah. So foundation paper piecing is sewing on paper um, mm -hmm. to get really intricate designs that you can't get with um, traditional piecing. Mm -hmm. So um, people are always a little thrown off by the paper aspect, but you just tear the paper out after and you're left with a, a sewn block, a quilting block. Um, it's like a stencil. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and like Bethany said, it's like, you don't have to cut out perfect pieces. I have scrap bins and I just reach in and grab a piece and use yeah. it. And it's so nice. And, um, it really is paint by numbers and you can get really creative with it, but 
I started foundation paper piecing because quilting, I used to love to just take my time and take, you know, a month or two months, three months to make a quilt. Um, And then I had my two girls and everything (laughs) changed, you know, you don't have any time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, So I really, or your time is very short and it could end abruptly. (laughs) I really craved like a, um, small, quick, satisfying project Mm -hmm. that I could, you know, feel good about and display in my home maybe. And so that's why I turned to foundation paper piecing because I can sit down and do a block in nap time, you know, and then maybe later that night I can turn it into a bag or a garment or whatever I want to make it with. So that's kind of what led me there is I was just craving that quicker project that could help me through. I'm a quick project person if it's gonna and that's part of the reason why I haven't done like a full-size quilt I've done wall hangings and things like that but I've never done like a full-size quilt because I don't have the patience yeah I can't keep working on the same thing for that long I get bored with it and I need something quick and easy but like with garments I like can sew up a a garment in a day you know or a couple of hours or sometimes two days if I'm watching a show and I get distracted (laughs) while I'm sewing um but I I'm like you like I need like that quick satisfaction and I feel like I was kind of losing my sojo yeah uh, you know doing a lot of the same stuff over and over and so when I got introduced to the FPP I was like um okay like this is a quick satisfaction and kind of got me my sojo back and was a nice change to challenge myself to learn something new that Mm -hmm. I hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found out about your membership, the paper piecers. So tell us a little bit about your membership that you have, because that's how I got to know you was through that. Oh, that's so cool. That makes me so happy. So, um, (laughs) Yes. Yeah, so I launched my membership in January of this year. It's called the paper piecers and it's all about foundation paper piecing. Um, so every month members will get a brand new FPP block, but something that lives in the membership forever are my project patterns, which really like when I was doing FPP before I was like, well, I have all these blocks and now what do I do with them? Like they're just sitting in yeah. my drawer. So Mm -hmm. I created these project patterns to put the blocks straight into so you can have a finished project and Mm -hmm. something to display in your home or something to use. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have monthly meetups, challenges, and um, we'll be doing swaps and we have a sew along. So yeah, it's like a really cool community. We all chat Mm -hmm. and get to know each other. And I love it. Yeah, it's all through an app, which I love. It's not through like a social media platform. So it's like something separate that I'm like, oh, I can log in. And this is all that I see on this whole app is my FPP club members. And like, they're, they like, you can post your finished you know, block and people are like commenting and saying they love your fabric choices. Or if you need help, you can post questions there and like you do the live sew along. So if anybody needs help to learn and your tutorials are very good, your patterns are always so good. So I thought for real quick, since I've been in it since January, I thought I would hold up my blocks because I have not turned them into anything yet. Partially okay. because I'm so proud of them. I don't, I'm scared I'm going to mess them up if I turn them into something. <laughs> yeah. Not, I mean, I know I won't, but it's like, yeah. I've never turned a block into a, a project, but I have to say the apron that you released for April, um, the pinafore apron with, for yep. the gardening, I am totally making that. That is yep. right up my alley. So let me show you. And let's keep in mind, before I joined your membership in January, the first time I had done FPP anything was December. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know, I have a local sewing club that meets once a month. And I wanted something that I could do at the club when, on our Saturdays that we sew together. And it's kind of hard when you do garment sewing to like, I need a sewing machine and a serger and, you know, and mm-hmm. it's just a little more involved and I need more space. So I thought, you know, I need something that I can do that's kind of crafty, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that just needs my sewing machine. So that that's kind of I found one, a pattern off Etsy and it was for yeah. like a mug rug or coaster and it was just a little coffee mug and I printed it out and I took it because one of my friends at the club knows how to do FPP and I've been watching her do it on Saturdays when we would yeah. meet up. And so it intrigued me and that's how I learned. And so she took the time to show me how to do it because the, of course the pattern that I downloaded off Etsy did not have instructions on how to do it. it just this the was the pattern. Template. It was yeah. just the template. 
And so I was like, well, I mean, I'm, I can usually figure stuff out, but yeah. the numbers and letters kind of, I didn't understand that. And so she took the time to show me and I was hooked. I made several more and gave them as Christmas gifts of the little coasters. And then um, I think it was her that in, well, there's several people in my sewing club now that are members of oh. your paper piecers because we all joined together. So now every Saturday that we meet up, we all make the same thing together from oh. your group. Um, and so we're doing them together on Saturdays. It's super fun. That's so, so cool. that was my first one. And then my next one was your January pattern, which is the hummingbird. Yes. I'm going to hold this up. So if you're watching over on YouTube, you can see it. That's Isn't so that cute. Yes. And this I am over on YouTube. Yes, it's it's not an easy one. So for your like this very not an easy one, no. Yeah. But I really I really enjoyed this one, and it it gave me so much confidence once I got this one figured out that I was like, okay, now I'm like the little coffee mug was cute, but this is really cool. Yes, yeah. is really cool. Your so I this is probably my favorite one. Okay. Yeah. Um, that I've I've done. And then what was the next one? February. It's February. So sometimes you do more than one pattern. Mm -hmm. So February, you did three patterns that we got to wow. make. And yes. they were hearts. Yes. And this is probably my favorite one. Let me hold this up. This one's so this cute. I love I you. That yeah. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. And then I did one that has tacos. See, why haven't you made this into like a beautiful table runner or something? I should have. Yeah. You know, I just I'm so I'm so excited to get them finished that I just um, I don't know. And then I just did a little pastel plaid one. So she had oh, and this was like the the um what's that yeah. pattern? The log the house log or good log cabin, yeah. So mm -hmm. they all had like different designs. Like this one has the star in the middle. So mm -hmm. you're still not doing the same one every time, but they were all like cohesive together. And then for March we did the clover. Yes. Which I thought was so cute. <laughs> and then this month, I haven't done them yet. Um when we recorded this, I hadn't had a chance to do them yet. But because our club meetup is not till two Saturdays from now. Um yeah. so that's usually when I save it to do it. But um it's two patterns and their gardening tools do you have Aww. them to hold up let me show you they're on my apron so yes she made this pinafore apron and gave us the oh my pattern God, these are, are the so pockets cute i love that yeah they've got the little so hearts sweet yes i love the handles, handles. i know you. i knew so ashley cool. would love this one because she course. loves to garden so do okay. i but she really loves to garden so i was like oh, mm -hmm. this is so cute so yeah. We don't know what the pattern's going to be until the first of the month or if you give us a little sneak peek or something early. But it's it's always fun. Like, I now look forward to, like, the first of the month. I'm like, what's oh. happening? What's happening? <laughs> like, which one's so next? Fun. We get so excited. We get excited to, like, pick out our fabrics and bring them to the club and we work on them together. And I love that we can I can do it with my friends in person and they're in the club, too. And so it's super fun that you're you're you've created this community around this and then I'm so grateful that I found you because it has made me so excited to keep doing more and more and I have one that I did recently after the clover one I was kind of felt like I had gotten my confidence up yeah and so I I sought out uh, a pattern from um was it pride and joy Yes. who makes those very detailed ones with like the lion and like all these mm. that you see people make. And you're just like, these are amazing. My friend Jennifer and my sewing club, she just did the lion and yeah. it's stunning. And I'm just like, I don't know how that's, that's a big, and her patterns are very detailed, yes. but I started with one of her smaller ones. Cause I wanted something I could hang in my sewing room. Actually, I may hang it here in my studio, but I did the sewing machine. Oh mm. my gosh. That's so and I'm good. like, I would have never had the confidence to do this had I not been a part of your membership and learning oh. like as I go. But then I, but I will tell you, I messed up a couple times and I had to take some things apart. But I got there, and it's all about the journey, right? Yeah, I'm so happy with how this one turned out. So this one's probably gonna get, you know, just like a wall hanging, like a border, and just mm -hmm. get put up so I can admire it. <laughs> Yeah, you need to put that one up. That's perfect for a studio. Isn't it fun? And um, but I, I have to say, like, it's 
I would have never attempted one of her patterns had I not mm-hmm. been a part of your membership and learned so much oh. through what mm-hmm. you're doing. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. That really just like is so nice to hear. And that's why I started it is just to like, mm-hmm. you know, have a community because that's what I craved is just like like minded people yeah. that are so excited about sewing and so excited to like do stuff together and get to know each other better. And it just lights me up to hear that. So thank you. Oh, good. No, this seriously, I, every time I do it and then I get done and I'm like, that, that is amazing how I am just taking scraps of fabric Mm -hmm. and just slapping them on and sewing them. And I love that. I don't have to be super precise. Like I follow the line, obviously you're stitching and following the line on the paper, but, um, like it's not, it's oh, yeah. not you, like you I don't feel have like to, you can hack up the fabric and just yeah like whatever right you don't have to like right. cut perfect blocks and stuff to no to sew no it and yeah. if I mess up I'm like oh well and I just like take it off and yeah. like redo yeah. it if I need to reprint that piece of paper mm-hmm. and cut it out because it's you know it got perforated or whatever and I had to start it like it's not a big deal yeah like it's because it's it's broken up in small sections so let's kind of explain without getting too technical if we can but like foundation paper piecing obviously your patterns come in different sizes Mm -hmm. so you do everything from like i think three inch size to like 10 inch i usually do your 10 inch because i want something bigger that i could put like on a wall or something but um kind of explain like the different sizing if you can and like why you might want to use a different size Mm -hmm. of the pattern and then maybe when we talk about um, it being like paint by number, mm-hmm. I, there's there's sections and you do that whole section and then you take that section and attach it to the next mm-hmm. section. It's kind of like a puzzle, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, my patterns all like across, whether they're in my membership or in my shop, um, because I have several patterns that aren't in the membership if memberships aren't your thing. Um, so they all are the same sizes. So they start at three inch, five inch, seven inch, and 10 inch. And I did those because um, I love the minis because they're mm-hmm. so dang cute. But then I also like the bigger blocks to like put into bigger things. Um, but mm-hmm. the project patterns, they come, several of them come in all of the sizes. So no matter what size block you make, you can use the project pattern. So like I, one of the project patterns is a zipper pouch. Mm-hmm. So this is for the three inch. So you can see they're very small. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. Yes. Actually, these would be great to add into like a bag pattern yes, or, you know, great. like to oh, put as like, like an outside just, pocket. Bianca yeah. would just like die for that pencil case. She would just, my daughter. She would, <laughs> yeah. So you could teach her how to make it. How fun would that be? Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't know if I want to tackle totally that with good. my daughter. <laughs> I was just thinking of our last experience with quilting, but it was it wasn't foundation paper piecing, so that might actually be better. Yeah, I don't know. Like you could kind of break it up, and like I, some people will color the paper to match the fabric that they've chosen, so they make sure they're mm-hmm. using the right fabric on each little section. Oh, I just write the fabric. Na- like, I write the color on the block, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, some people will take colored pencils or whatever, and they'll fill it in so that they make sure that they are don't get confused of which yeah. mm-hmm. which color they want to use and which which part so yes but i love the minis yes i yes, haven't too. i haven't sewn one yet i feel like i need to yeah they're fun they're challenging in their you know own unique way yeah. but they're they're so fun and so cute and rewarding so look at that um, little butterfly that's so cute that's so, yeah, i know <laughs> but like so like for the project patterns you know this is for the three inch but then the same zipper bag for the 10 inch oh, so. so cute. Nice. So I wanted to just, you know, appeal to as many people as possible course, with this sizing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's um, so fun. So yeah, the, now, you go. Ahead. I have to. I have to say before we dive into like how the these blocks come together, or maybe we'll. I'll ask this later. Do you have a pattern? For, huh? Yeah. The show. Yeah. I yeah. Do you have a paper? Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. Should I show an hour later? Yeah. Go for it. Okay. So the templates all come um, broken up like this. So this is the heart that Bethany showed the log cabin. This is it finished. Mm -hmm. Mm. So um, they come broken up like this and you just cut them out along the dotted line. 
And then you can see each one is lettered and numbered. So mm -hmm. like you said, it's a puzzle and it's so fun. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, let's see for these ones, like you would start D1 goes to D2 and then you do D3. So um, I have you just do it in the order. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. do it in the order. I have a full, I have a YouTube channel that has lots of videos on tutorials and tips and how to do it. Then I have mm -hmm. free patterns that you can practice on. And um, so, yeah. So if you want to learn or try it out, give it a go first to see if it's right for you. I do have mm -hmm. some, some things, but, but yeah, the templates are, are fun. Cause like you said, if you mess up on one, you could just quickly reprint and cut this little piece out. You know, I've had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yes, because I feel like <laughs> I feel like the tricky part is um uh remembering you're putting like I I kind of just stick with solids for the yeah. most part so that if I accidentally put the wrong not right sides together and I it yeah. really doesn't matter uh, the solids yeah, yeah. Yeah. um but with prints and stuff you you have to make sure it's like right sides together you you flip it over you sew the same and then you have to make sure it's folding the right way and that the fold, the angle of the fold covers the whole section right. and angles will get you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've learned like the piece, the section that I need to cover may not be very big, but if it's on an, on an angle fold, then I need a much bigger piece to make yes, sure I'm really. covering that. So it's, it's just fun to like learn and figure it out. Yeah. So there's been times where I'm like, well, that didn't work and you just yeah. have to seam rip her out yeah. and sometimes you can seam rip it out and still use the same paper sometimes you may need to print it that piece again or whatever whenever we go to club and we sew these together i usually have it printed out twice just yeah. in case <laughs> i need to redo a section but yeah. it's really like it's just fun i think um there's there's a satisfaction when you're done of like taking the paper off the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is, but I can just sit there while watching a show and just pick the paper off the back. Cause yes. what, I don't know what you recommend, um, Liza, but I lower my stitch length down to 1.5. Yeah. Um, some people do too. Um, but having a shorter stitch mm -hmm. length helps perforate the paper more. So it's easier mm -hmm. to tear it off. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of like pick it out of all your little seams and everything yeah. and give it a nice press as you go. And you can press right with the paper. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. press right on the paper. It's use your little Olizo. <laughs> yeah. I use my little mini Olizo. Um, we, uh, Jennifer, my sewing club, she made um, portable little ironing stations to put right next to where we're sewing at clubs. So they're just um, uh, like TV trays. Yeah. And she had mm -hmm. two in her attic that she was never going to use. So she's like, why well, might as well repurpose these? And she put like, um, insole bright, which is yep. the, the batting that has the mm -hmm. foil. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she did extra layers of batting and then covered it with fabric and stapled it to the bottom and they just fold up and they, yep. you know, really portable little ironing station. Nice. And That's so genius. we, we've really gotten into it. If you can't tell, we're just a little obsessed, but, yes. um, and that's got me my... my oh sorry go ahead <laughs> that's one of my like biggest tips for fpp is to set yourself mm -hmm. up for success with your space yes. and the yes. portable um ironing station sounds fantastic yeah mm -hmm. it's well i have a mini ironing station that i made with like a rolling cart and the little ironing board from ikea and i just yeah. like mounted it to the top so it's like i got all my supplies underneath and then yeah. it just wheels around my room and it's just perfect to set up next to my sewing machine so when i'm in my sewing room that's what i use but when i'm on the go mm -hmm. i love the little folding it folds flat you know little tv tray and it's the right height you know for when you're sitting but ashley actually for i think it was for christmas you got me my first mini rotary cutter like i never had a mini rotary cutter i've always had just the big ones yeah and now i'm obsessed with it and it's perfect for foundation paper piecing yeah to make sure you don't like cut too much off or anything How big um, is it? So that sounds so cute it's like the little fiskars like the smaller one yeah it's like little um i mean it's got a normal size handle but it's just a smaller it's like the half size blade right or something like that anyways we can link it in the description of the podcast but i really love that and then i recently got an actual fpp ruler mm. that has the little lip for the quarter inch so i can just put that right up next to the paper Ooh. when i fold it back and just and it um i'm telling you i'm in i'm in it 
I'm in deep. I got one of those quarter inch seam guys. I wonder if that's the same thing. It's like literally a piece of acrylic that's a quarter of an inch. It's the rule. It's the whole ruler. It's like a normal ruler, but it's got the little lip that sticks out. So that that is exactly a quarter of an inch. So you can just butt that up to the edge of the paper and but it's the whole ruler so you can hold the whole thing. But yeah, this uh, is the whole ruler. Okay. Is it's it like it's it's this long and it's a literally yeah. a quarter of an inch. And that's it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So found at the thrift store. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> They're called what? They're called add a quarter, and you can yeah. even get oh. add an eighth. They're really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of tools that I don't think I'm even aware of when it comes to quilting. Yeah. So this was going to be my question to you. When I get done with one of these, and let's say I do want to quilt it <laughs> and make it into a wall hanging. How do you quilt? Like, I don't want to sew over this. It's so pretty. <laughs> And I'm just worried, like, do you just straight line quilt or do you, do you kind of play around with it, do different styles? Like, I don't know. I I think that's what's keeping me from turning these into something. Yeah. Is the thought of having to sew right through this. Yeah. Let me, let me get a, let me get an example for you. Okay. I don't think you'll ruin it. I think you'll enhance it. It probably will. But mm-hmm. my my quilting um, techniques kind of start and stop with straight lines. So, <laughs> yes, I typically do straight lines just because my um, free motion needs some practice. Yeah, um, that's a whole other skill that takes mm-hmm, time to learn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is just straight line. So you really plan it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I typically start now, with the center, just go straight yeah. down, and then do however far my my foot has a little bar a little guide a little guide yeah so now show them what this pat this finished project is because this is the other pattern that you gave us this month it's yes. the little irony mitt yeah double oven mitt a double oven oh, mitt. cute cute <laughs> love it does it have that insole <laughs> bright so inside cute. of it because i can hear the scrunchie <laughs> yes yeah that insole yeah. bright with the foil for the heat and but those I... are so cute because they can hang over your oven yes yeah they so just when i was right looking up. when i was looking at the patterns i was like okay which one do I make again in the seven inch? I think it's a seven or five inch size for that little oven mitt. And I was like, yeah, I need to make, I need to make yeah. the smaller ones. Yes. But I yeah, feel no, like no, the no. bigger ones, especially with the hummingbird, because that was a challenging <laughs> first one mm-hmm. that I needed to do the bigger one to not get overwhelmed by the teeny tiny pieces. Yeah. I couldn't mm-hmm. imagine making that hummingbird a five inch. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I could now. But when I first started, the the actually the smaller it, it can be more challenging. Yeah, yeah, and it definitely is. But it's once you start doing it, it's like so much fun. Mm-hmm. You you'll <laughs> you'll love it. Um, but the I do have a video too on my YouTube for tips for tiny foundation paper piecing okay. for the, mm-hmm. the little three inch ones. Um, yeah, you kind of just have to be more accurate with your. Mm-hmm. Like make sh- making sure you're on the line, stitching on the mm-hmm. line, you know, mm-hmm. back stitch and stuff. Because some of the lines are so tiny, you only have a couple couple stitches. So, and then pressing them well, but it's it's yeah. it's fun. You could totally do it. Like you're you're. I'm pro. sure I can. I just have to try. Right? You got to start. <laughs> I mean, I started with these, so we could totally do it. Um, I'm curious though, like. Now that you've got your club going up, and I know you just re so you you opened the club in January. So let's talk about that for anybody who's like, okay, I really do want to try this. This sounds like a great way to learn. Um, you opened your club up in January. Once once it had been open for a little bit, you did close it. So it's like a private group. Um, yeah. and then you just reopened it at the beginning of April. And I know you've already closed it. It's only open for a little time to let some new members in that have heard about it. Um, do you know if you're going to be reopening it in the future? So our listeners might can, once they follow you, can kind of keep an eye out for that if they're interested. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll open it again in July, July 1st. And Mm -hmm. I do have a wait list. So if you want to go to thepaperpiecers.com, you can join the wait list Mm -hmm. and you're the first to hear when it opens. Oh, Um, awesome. But yeah, it's and you open. said July first. Yes, mm-hmm. July first. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Every two months. And how much is it every month? 
Yeah, so it's ten dollars a month, and you can cancel it whenever. And um, yeah, I have, I have video tutorials walking mm -hmm. you through the membership, how to navigate it, how to cancel it if you want, um, how to do foundation paper piecing. I've got lots of practice ones in there, so mm -hmm. it's a cool yeah. space. And like you said, you get you get the pattern of the month for the foundation paper piecing. You also throw in other patterns sometimes, like the apron and the oven mitt to like be able to take your finished mm -hmm. FPP I love and that. apply it to a project. Right. I love that you help people see it like full circle. Mm -hmm. um, so you get so much, and then you get a, a group of people that mm -hmm. are doing it along with you. And then if you finish it in the month that the pattern comes out, you just mark it complete in the app. And you pick a winner every month and do a little giveaway. So Aww, that's, that's super so awesome. It's a very engaging group. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm glad. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes that was my, my whole goal was to keep it yeah. active and engaged. So mm -hmm. it really is. I mean, I especially when the pattern first comes out, it's always fun to see who finishes it first. Yeah. And some of these people are like on it. Yes. They are on it. They are like, I hit print the moment that hits my inbox and yes. uh, they've That's already, re they're ready to go. I love it. <laughs> it's hard for me to wait to sometimes to sew it up at my club. Oh, so yeah. sometimes I'll, I'll sew it before club and then I'll sew it again at club. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, these are super fun and I'm so excited for you for this new venture. What made you decide to, to do something like a membership? like yes. this. So it, you know, I all, I wanted to start my business. I started it in 2021 to be home with my babies more. Um, and that's always been my drive behind it is, you know, help provide for my family, be home with my babies. And so I've done patterns along the way I've done, I host a business retreat. Um, yeah. What else do I do? <laughs> I, have, I have a book coming out. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. yes yeah. It's wow. coming out in September and it's all foundation paper piecing. So. Um, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I think if, you, so if cool. you like the hummingbird, you'll really like the book. So. Ooh. Oh, I do love the hummingbird. It's probably yeah. my favorite one so far. It's Good. just so pretty. Now I really yeah. do want to go make it again in like smaller sizes because yeah. I feel like I need to put it on something that I can carry with me and show off to everybody when mm. I'm out and about. Yeah, like a little <laughs> coin purse or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, okay, do you have any plans for a flamingo blog or is that like a thing? That's her thing. That's her yeah. jam. At least putting in requests. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it to my list. That's so cool. Okay. I mean, no rush, but like June or July would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Do you do you get requests? Like I didn't even think about that. Like, do you get people to say oh, like, "Hey, sure, you should totally right? make something like this"? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lots of people do request, and um, like there were so many requests for the apron, and I was like, mm -hmm. it was hard to keep it a secret, but I was like, it's already in the works. So that was cool that the people wanted it. But yeah, um, lots of good ones are coming in the book too that people request. It's a book for it's about more continued on my flower patterns. I have lots of flower patterns in my shop, mm -hmm. so there'll be lots more in the book and lots of like um little animals and stuff like that. So fun. Um I mean have you ever thought about like doing a retreat in person? For for FPP? Yeah, yes. like a little weekend getaway and doing something like that for people to really dive in and and get oh, to yeah. do something like that because I mm -hmm. think that would be I, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I would absolutely love to do that. More so, just like to have fun and socialize and mm -hmm. meet people. Um, yeah, but yes, that, wouldn't that be so fun at like a beautiful location? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I would love to. Yeah, last year Ashley and I we did a retreat with a few of our close friends, sewing friends in the mountains, and we mm -hmm. had all of our machines lined up on the porch, looking out at the woods, and oh, we're just sitting so outside cool. sewing, and it was just so nice. That yeah, sounds it was, lovely. It was, it was really fun, and there it was, was fun until the there. sun went down and the mosquitoes came out, and we had to move all the machines inside. Yes. But um, during the day, it was lovely. <laughs> It was. We could. We were ironing outside. Like it was yeah. just. Oh my god! It had a huge deck, so it was just like huge covered porch. Yeah, and then there was like deer at the like down. 
And yeah. I'm just like, wow. Like, this is Did like, you guys post about that? I feel like I saw. Yeah, it was, it was like a last year. I kind of like was like, I'm so, I'm, we're, we're doing a retreat. Like I just, I need to like, well, that was the first time Ashley and I met in person was at that retreat. Um, mm -hmm. And I got to meet all my other sewing friends, you know, in person. It was a small group. There's like six of us um, cool. in a cabin cool. together. So it was like a small group and it was more of like a social and sewing yeah. Um, it was, so we had activities out every day. Like we took a train ride through the mountains and we, you know, mm -hmm. did, went to an apple orchard and did taste it like just different things every day just to get out. And then the rest of the time we were at the cabin, like hanging out, sewing, mm -hmm. hot tubbing, whatever, you know, just mm -hmm. having fun. And it was like, what, four or five days? Um, I think it was five nights. Yeah. yeah four was. or five nights. Yeah. So it was super fun. Um, I really want to do it again, but on a bigger scale. Yeah. <laughs> so. But like more of an actual, like people are coming and to learn. Yeah. yeah learning. That was this more was... of a just social testing yeah. the water, seeing if we like it. And yeah, I mean, it was good, but that's why me and like me, Bethany and Diana, we're going to go have a little girl's trip, but this is like purely like friends just seeing each other. Yeah, we're not even so like, no, yeah. we're not. <laughs> We're not even bringing sewing machines. We just <laughs> no. want to hang out at the beach. We might crochet. We'll, That's go, like, like, we'll go to the fabric store, like, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll still go fabric shopping and do all of that. But, like, we're just going to have, like, a girl's trip without sewing. Mm -hmm. I think it's good to take breaks. Because Ashley and I, like, we this is what we do. We eat, sleep, breathe, think 24-7 about sewing. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like, like our world here. revolves around it, right? <laughs> so, um it's like my full-time job. It's my hobby. It's my, our podcast. It's all these other things. And I had to tell you when I was, I was not joking when I say I took a deep dive into FPP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She went and because bought all the things too. I bought all the things, but I also, <laughs> I'm one of those that gets really nerdy and I love to like fully understand like the whole process. And that includes creating the patterns. So yeah. I recently purchased a license for the eq8 software is that the software that you use so i did start on eq8 because it's very user friendly for fpp mm -hmm. they'll, they'll um separate yeah. it for you they'll number mm -hmm. it but now mm -hmm. i do everything on uh, adobe illustrator you know, illustrator yeah so mm -hmm. ashley and i learned illustrator for our fashion like garment patterns that we make but i was like you know I really want to dive into this side. And so I did get the EQ8. So I'm still going through, like, like you said, YouTube University yeah. <laughs> to learn it from different people. Yeah. Um, because I, I want it because Ashley asked me to make her a flamingo too. Yes. So good. we'll see who no, gets I'm to it first. Putting, I'm just putting out all the feelers. Anybody. I don't <laughs> care who it is. It just, please. I, just well, I have a pattern. I have a pattern for a flamingo. Um, and it's a whole quilt. I don't think it's not foundation paper piece. Probably I can't find it for the life of me. It has literally like <laughs> flew away. Um, so that yeah. was the one thing you were looking for in your big closet clean out recently. And you never found it. You went through that whole closet hmm. and Dude, never found that. Well, like, it must not be in this room. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I need more flamingos in my life. So <laughs> I know you nice to have a little three best. inch and a five inch and a seven inch and a 10 inch. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh -huh. <laughs> she would have them plastered everywhere. Yeah. Every yeah. pocket on every garment she makes and every bag she makes would have yeah flamingos on it. What? I mean, I, I mean, you love what you love, Ashley. We're not judging. Not We're unapologetically, not judging. as they say. Yeah. <laughs> unapologetically obsessed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you'll love it. when yeah. you figure out eq8 and if you have any questions let me know but it's so fun to make patterns and do what you want yeah. so you i kind of want to make one that looks like my dog that's sitting over here who's passed out um <laughs> because i just feel like well both of my dogs i need to have an fpp of both of them hanging on yes. my wall like a little portrait yeah so i don't know i mean i grew up sewing but i also went to my first major in college was fine art and painting and so Ooh. i really love painting and i have portraits of my dogs but mm -hmm. i would love to me this is like painting with fabric yeah that's what i think of when i think of fpp it's there she is she's sitting up <laughs> she heard me talk about her you want to come say hi 
Yes, come say, say hi. hi. Oh. She's our she's our silent co-host. She's her. always sleeping right here and next judging. to me. Mm-hmm. And oh, judging. Okay. She does have judgy eyes. Her name is Biscuit. But I do need to like make one of her and Gus to like have a fabric portrait in a sense. Yeah. I think cool. that would be super cute. People love like the the animals. dog mm-hmm. animals and stuff. So I don't know. That yeah. would be super cute. That's my that's my goal to get to that point. But I have a lot of learning to do. But I really love diving into that stuff. It's a good mm-hmm. change of pace. So yeah, yeah. you'll love. Anyways, it. for anyone else who wants to learn how to create patterns, you can use Adobe Illustrator or you can utilize a software called EQ8, which is what Electric Quilt electric yeah. quilt um so well, they have a lot of great tutorials and it's not just for fpp mm-hmm. like it's quilting yeah. blocks full quilts you can design all sorts of things in there but it's really tailored towards quilting and, and foundation paper piecing and um i think do they even have applique oh yeah they have applique quilt blocks yeah. they have it all yeah yeah they're so really great that's a whole nother avenue that you can rabbit hole as i like to say that you can yeah. go down <laughs> join me (laughs) oh my goodness well this has been so fun chatting with you i'm so glad that we we got to have you on and i got to get to know you a little bit better outside of just the paper piecers club and i can't wait for you to reopen it so be sure our listeners if you're really interested in this membership come join me um i'm gonna be there (laughs) with everybody else in that membership and we're gonna keep learning and practicing our fpp so when she reopens it in july um, but yeah. go ahead and join her wait list so that you can be in the know first of when that reopens. Um, and I'll probably share it on my Instagram too, because I have had so many people ask me like, I want to do these. And so, but if you're not up for a membership, she does have a website. You can go look at her patterns. She's got some <laughs> tutorials over there on her YouTube. So be sure to check that out to see if this is a new uh, technique that you want to learn, but it's super yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. So Thank you so much for being here and joining us. Yeah. Thank you, guys. This has been so lovely chatting with you. It's been great. And um, I can't wait to s- learn all about your book coming out. Like, that mm-hmm. that has me. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. Thank um, you. So are you guys ready for our sewing confession of the week? All right. Let's yeah. do this. Okay, this one's a little long, so just bear with me, but I'm going to read the whole thing. And for our listeners, if you don't know, um, we do a sewing confession every week. These are anonymous. If you would like to submit an anonymous sewing confession, just go over to the socialhour.com and uh, check it out over on our website. You can submit it. We never know who is saying these, but we do get a kick out of them. So let's dive into this week's. Um, it starts out with, this one might scare Bethany. So Uh-oh. let's let's, that's what it says. She said, I just pulled out a sewing machine that had been sitting dormant for 10 years and I didn't service it or deep clean it. I find that sometimes the techs are mean or intimidating or I just don't want to pay or wait weeks or months to get it back. However, I did recently have a great experience at a shop further away. So maybe someday Bethany will convince me to service my sewing machines. I, I really feel hope- like dentists. They're, they judge you, right? It's like, have you been brushing your teeth? Have you yeah. been, your been flossing? Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I I totally get it. And and I, don't Liza, you may that. not know this about me, but I have a pedestal that I will always stand on about how important it is to take care of your machine and clean your machine and change your needles and get them serviced regularly. And um, and I change my needles when they break. And, and then we have people like Ashley who just infuriate me. I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> but I really am passionate about making sure you take care of your investment so you can continue to enjoy your hobby. And the better shape your machine's in, the better your projects will turn out. The less but issues you you'll run how do you upgrade your machine if it keeps working forever? <laughs> you need backups. You don't just completely get rid of it. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I always have a backup. So when you do need to take one to get service, you're not completely without a machine for weeks or months because I know it can take a while sometimes. But um, and I know sometimes they can be, you know, give these techs a, a break. They might be grumpy because they keep seeing machines in such disrepair because they're not being taken care of. I mean, yeah. I would be grumpy if I saw that every day. So I'm just saying. Yeah. I did this. I love that they started it out with this might scare Bethany because it kind of does. 
they know you so well. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. And it's fine. We laugh about it though. But seriously, anytime I can bring up cleaning your machine, and if you need a tutorial on how to do that, go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I have very specific ways that you should be cleaning your machine. Um, coming, I actually sat down with the service techs that work on the Singer, Viking, and Foff machines at my office. And I was like, if you could tell users like the best ways to clean the machines and I got the best tips from them and that's what I'm sharing with everybody. So I'm not just like spitting out nonsense. I'm it's literally coming from the techs that work for our organization that like repair all of our Singer Viking and Boff machines. So um anyways, some some of them have they definitely had some good advice and that's what I keep preaching. So I hope and you guys it universal? You know. What now? Sorry. Is it universal for any type of machine? Yeah. Those tips will. Yeah, good. honestly, and, and the listeners probably already know, I can't not say it, but, and Ashley already knows, but like the biggest mistake people make is using canned air on their sewing machines. Mm. Can we talk about that? No, <laughs> we really <laughs> Basically, yeah. it just blows the it, it does blow some of it out, but there's a lot that actually gets pushed further back into your machine will actually damage your motor, it'll clog your belts, it'll and those are areas you can't clean on your own. So mm. while it seems quick and easy, it's not the best solution. Also, that stuff's really bad for you to inhale. Uh canned air is not just canned air. So it's got other stuff in it. And so I would actually avoid purchasing that stuff at all. And use a little mini vacuum, which I wet enough so have too, sitting right? right here. <laughs> it's wet, so you can you're adding moisture to the inside of your yeah. fine. Yeah, it's just not good. Metals. Um, and so anytime I see someone like sharing their tips on how to clean their machine, and they take that can of air, I'm just like, oh my gosh, please no, <laughs> this is so bad. But you know, I'm just gonna keep preaching it until everybody learns the they proper way, because I, I just want them to take care of their machine. I just when I went to, to buy my baby lock, I asked if I could use it, and they said, "Yeah." <laughs> it's like, it's just one of those things where, machine. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. one of those things where like we didn't know better, and so mm. we did it. And we've all, I mean, like when I was growing up, like that's how we cleaned it out. Like it's it, that's how we clean the keyboard on our computer, and you know those kind of things. Like it's. Yeah. It makes sense in theory and you see the stuff flying out, but what you don't see is the stuff not flying out and getting further out of reach. And so now that we know more and we also know how bad that stuff is to inhale, we, we actually are really trying to let people know, like you really shouldn't be using that. That's why your machine doesn't come with a can of air to clean it. It comes with a brush. Okay. And that's what you're supposed to use. Ashley's laughing inside because she knows. Once I get on this pedestal, it's really hard for me to get off. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today. If you guys have a sewing confession you would like to submit, be sure to go over to our website. Liza, thank you again for joining us. Yeah, I am so you. glad that we got to chat today. And I am excited to see all of the new members in the paper piecers. That's going to be so much fun to have some new faces and new people excited to learn. So, Yes. Well, thank you again for having me and for sharing. So I'm excited. Awesome. Well, guys. Be sure you're signed up for our newsletter so you always know what's coming next. And we will see you next week on the podcast. Happy selling. Bye. Bye. Bye.